Developing your pieces on their optimum squares is the main task of any opening and if you're playing the Italian game, it becomes very simple and easier to implement it in action. So in this video, we are seeing the Italian game Geico Piano with the white side where we will learn and understand from a model game played by Magnus Carlsen and Mkhitaryan K from the rapid open of 2014. So we will learn what are the understand what are the plans and ideas for both the sides. So let's go. So basically e4, it begins with e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, supporting the pawn and bishop to c4, developing the piece and preparing to castle. And here white's main idea is to play c3, uh, d4 or d3 to keep the center but most probably someday c3 to d4 break is the main idea which white wants to implement. And the knight on b1 will get developed on d2 to f1 to g3 after the castling and rook f1 ideas. And what are the ideas for black in the system? Black can play knight f6, bishop c5, a6 preserve this bishop on this long diagonal. He can castle long, castle short, wherever he wants to go. He can go for a pawn storm. He can play for the d5 break uh, after d6 because he has to support this pawn. So these are the basic ideas. Let's continue with the game. In the game, we are going to see bishop c5. We will see knight f6, the two, three knights mediation afterwards, where we will cover them, cover the front lever attack. Uh, so make sure you check that video in the future. Okay, but for now we are seeing bishop to c5 very principled opening and we all know Agard Meta he play he, he suggests this b4 gambit. I don't remember the name. If you do remember, please tell me in the comments because I have forgotten it. Okay, so bishop c5 will cover that too. So bishop c5 developing a piece and now uh, as soon as possible black will just play knight f6 castle short or even try to castle long. Play d6 because the bishop is outside the pawn chain and that is very nice. So now c3 as for plan, knight to f6 attacking the pawn and here we have d4, d4 is playable where after e captures, c captures, bishop b4, knight c3 um, and this pawn we are sacrificing but we'll just uh, basically castle and this is very tricky line uh, but the problem is that black is not bad, this is perfectly fine for black. Uh, but white has a small lead in development. This is a playable line, but white uh, has to be pawned down for some time. But it is a tricky line, so make sure uh, make sure you just check it out. But the main line, Geico Piano, is just to play t3 and stop the pawn, uh, support the e4 pawn which was attacked. This very principled and very very common and very very easy to play because in d4 you're sacrificing the pawn. Okay. But nevertheless, d6 and castles. a6 has a told you to preserve the bishop because also prepare b5. So bishop to b3. Why bishop to b3? Because b5 is coming, right? So bishop to b3. Okay. Uh, and h6. So black doesn't want anyone to come on the g5 square. Uh, knight bd2 as I told you knight bd2 to f1 to g3 or e3 is the main uh, idea which uh, one needs to perform or maneuver when you don't have the c3 square vacant for your knight. This idea is employed in these, you can employ it in any opening basically but most probably it is employed in the real Lopez and the Italian game. We will see everything. Knight bd2, castles and now uh, there is a move h3 which will stop knight uh, maneuvers. Uh, in fact, that is oh, an engine. It's not, it, it is playable, not um, recommended by the engine though. Engine recommends a4 and he recommends knight to c4. I only like the move a4. I don't like the move knight c4 much. But the idea of knight c4 is actually good because you are going to uh, bring knight c4 to e3. So you don't need to play rook e1 unnecessarily. So knight c4 to e3 you can bring. So fine. But uh, So in this uh, type of situations you can play a4 and preserve the bishop on that diagonal. Or you can play a3 and so just try to put that bishop on that uh, g8 to a, a2 diagonal. a2 to g8 diagonal. Okay. So rook e1 but, but um, I think Carlson wants to put the knight on g3. And uh, 
make sure that you understand that knight g4 if it is played rook e2 is always there and you this is what happens you will get uh, for for a rook you can give two minor if you get getting two minor pieces well it is good six points it is equal but uh, white has piece uh, advantage like uh, see for one rook one rook two pieces two pieces but he has two minor uh, i mean one bishop and knight for a rook so that is uh, strong because you have an extra piece well uh, that doesn't happen because after rook e1 he just plays bishop e7 and knight to f1 with the uh, same ideas of knight g3 uh, so the maneuvers are in action and these are the main maneuvers you have to understand now let's see how does the game continue bishop to e6 as i told you like black will also play for the d5 break uh, he will someday bring the knight e uh, e7 to g6 play c6 d5 and the bishop can go to g this light squared bishop can go to g4 or it can ask for exchange on this diagonal on e6 so these are the main ideas you can f go for this pawn uh, moves and queen e7 is the this knight on f6 can come to d7 to c5 many many ideas are there so but b6 b6 is a very quiet maneuver because if you take f takes and you're playing for the d5 break that's what i mean by that so now let's continue the game. Uh, knight to g3, rook to e8, bishop captures an e6, and he prepares rook captures an e6. And now when the knights are on g3, you know, knights can jump to h5, f5, and h5, uh, where they can attack the g7 square, which is knight g3 to f5 is a very, um, very common maneuver employed by Esporov. So rook e6, bishop e3. Bishop into e3, rook into e3. So, are you getting it? Both of the bishops have been eliminated from the board. So, no more tactics because you know, when the bishop is preserved on the long diagonal, it is spinning this pawn. So, this square on g3 becomes really weak and open for tactics. So, exchanging the bishop makes sense. And as I told you, black plays for the d5 break. Now, Carlsen sees the weakness and attack it. So use the method of, method of questioning and understand what is happening in the position on every turn. Ask yourself, what is my opponent's move? What is my opponent's threat? If you just do it, you will improve your chess. Rook to b8 and h3. Making room, uh, removing, eliminating all the background weaknesses. And now, uh, after queen d7, Alison uh, develops his last piece and now you see all the pieces have been developed by the 17th move now we have and it's time to plan as we know in this game both the players have castle on the same side uh, the uh, only idea thing or plan can be made is to open the d file because the d file is going to get open with d captures on e4 and d captures for example or black can play d4 which is not played by the opponent Mkhitaryan because after c captures e captures rook 3 e2 white has the open semi-open c file this pawn structure is uh, solid but this is a playable opportunity knight can come to e5 and ask for exchanges so you know by the 17th move here these are the positions uh, uh, post uh, opening position and this is the middle game here is what you have to really think right so from the opening itself you have to decide where you have to position your pieces so here black decides to open the d file with d captures an e4 now in some positions you cannot just attack like if you just play b6 uh, like you want to move the rook what is happening is kind of weakening the a6 pawn so he will just again attack it but then a5 is coming so everything is you can play b6 a5 and uh, try to remove this rook's uh, like eliminate him or free him from the support of the b7 pawn so b6 a5 and then you can bring the rook to d8 for example and uh, that some similar things happen in the game but um, 
here black decides to take on e4 let's continue d takes e4 opening the d file knight to f5 attacking the queen so he's freeing the rook's defense by active play so this is really nice queen c2 and now he plays rook d8 isn't that good b3 stopping knight's uh, maneuvers to c4 and g6 here so 20 moves done and uh, magnus carlson with the white pieces plays rook 3 e2 why rook 3 e2 because the d2 square wanna i want to come on the d2 square like why not d3 because he will take that's because knight is supporting the d2 square that's why we'll go to d2 knight c6 knight f1 and knight to h5 knight to e3 like only square is to go there so now it's a maneuvering that like you have brought the pieces you have developed the pieces with the help of the italian opening now just developing like like now you have to plan now rook d2 of course rook d2 rook d6 and now many exchanges are going to ha uh, happen after rook d1 queen e6 and b4 so now how many attackers here one two how many defenders one two three okay so no problem so king to g7 so sometimes you have to improve your position for the end game too. The king is not getting ready for the end game, and um, because many exchanges are going to happen in a moment. A4, rook d2, knight d2, h5, and knight to f3 back. So rook to d6, h4, queen d7. So the game is going on on the queen side, on the uh, d file, the queen's file. So basically, now it's like you have to plan. It's on you how you want to proceed with the king but uh, with this opening i think it becomes easy to carry your pieces out really really easily let's see the game rook d6 queen d6 now they are going to the end game where white has basically white has three pawns on the queen side black has three pawns but white's pawn have been advanced so they can they are potential past pawns this e pawn e pawn same the structure is same with uh you can see that this Control of these squares is very important. No one is going to come on g4 square, but white can jump to g5. I mean here. So I think uh, it is slightly better for white here. So g3, or limit trying to see, get out the knight, and the knight e6, knight c4, queen d8, and you know, who is coming? Like white is taking the initiative, and that is very important. Knight takes on e5. Because you see, after this g3 moves, we are attacking this pawn and we just Carlson just won it. So, here you have to see like what is weak. This is weak. How can I attack it? Okay, come here. But I think I should, I can just take the initiative, take the tempo, and then the queen moves and I can grab the pawn. So, on 34 moves already, we have got the pawn. So, in order to excel at chess, should know some of basic openings like which you would of course learn from this channel uh, basic ideas from the opening is very important you know the main ideas then you can plan on your own but the most important thing is before each move I have to see what is my opponent's move what is his threats and what are the weaknesses in the position this will help us to understand the evaluation of the whole game and then it makes us easier to plan for the next things. So then you can calculate and evaluate your plans. So now uh, easily white wins because he has a pawn. Let's uh, let's just continue with the game. C5, B5, AB5, AB5. And now white is a pawn of 4, 5, 6, 3, 4, 5. Now how can you support this pawn? You can either play C4 or you can just attack it. Carlson decides to do that. Knight E6. We have knight c5 supporting the pawn queen d7 what it is doing i think mm, i don't know what it's doing man okay just supporting the knight oh no i don't know queen e2 and he plays queen b5 okay queen b5 he wants to come on b5 all right king g2 preparing for the king you in the end game you gotta bring your king let's quickly see because now the game is going to get over in few moves queen d3 Queen to b5, queen to d5, and queen b3. Like black is just trying to attack the c3 pawn, trying to hold the position. But the white knight is 
very nicely supporting this pawn and very nicely looking at this undefended pieces implementing tactics comes from undefended pieces and Carlson plays knight d6 this cover attack queen b6 and now you just get the b7 pawn and uh, even the c5 is weak so he just moves the queen to b2 why does he move this queen to b2 so in fact the black tries to get some initiative with queen b2 he could have played queen c7 where e5 and he can put in post knight on d6 and play f4 f prepare f4 f5 this pawn is getting this pawn is really weak this like all the initiative is what white is getting the initiative white is just playing and black is just defending so most probably this is really easy uh, and black becomes really passive that's why he plays queen b tries to hold the game but this law loses his c5 pawn and now uh, in this position after like you can take on c3 but then knight captures on e6 f captures and queen captures and this uh, pawn is a passed pawn and this end game is with two pawn lead is really winning and it was in this position that calls in minus one and this is how we can implement the we have learned the ideas in the italian opening we'll also see italian game 2 where black wins in the next video thank you for watching and i hope you learned so much bye